All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Dennis Schultz. And I'm Surabhi Ravishankar. And we're both with the Emerging Technologies team here at Salesforce. So we have a very brief 20 minutes to tell you about a very cool and very free application that can help you get started adding artificial intelligence into your custom applications. Now, this wouldn't really be a Salesforce presentation if I didn't start out by advising you to make all of your purchasing decisions based off of what's real and not any implied promises that you might get out of my presentation here today. So we're dealing today with an unprecedented amount of data, and I think everybody knows that. But even organizations like IDC and Datamation have, have made it clear that we believe that up to 80% of enterprise data is actually unstructured data. And what that means is it's data that doesn't fit neatly into rows and columns in a database. So how do you get any business value out of all of those tweets and emails and images that you might have in your enterprise architecture? Well, how many people here, uh, through, as by way of an illustration here, how many people here have been asked to fill out a satisfaction survey after you've purchased a product or uh, a service? Okay, yeah, everybody, right? Okay, now how many envy the people who have to go through all of those survey responses looking at the answers to very ambiguous questions like, how could we do better in the future? They're trying to figure out, OK, what was the person really talking about? And were they happy about it or unhappy about it? It sounds like a very tedious and error-prone job, right? For that reason, a lot of our customers are coming to us looking for ways to incorporate artificial intelligence into the applications that they're building, the custom apps that they're building. So you're going to hear a lot in the next couple days here at TDX about what I like to call packaged AI. So think about um, Einstein lead scoring, or next best action, or um, case classification. These are AI capabilities that are baked right into some of our service, uh, service cloud, sales cloud, some of our, our, our prepackaged cloud offerings. But how many here are considering or, or already have started building applications, custom applications, that you want to build artificial intelligence into those apps? Great, exactly. That's what the Einstein Platform Services is all about. It's enabling developers to build those apps with custom artificial intelligence. So with the Einstein Platform Services, you can harness the power of that unstructured data in those text blobs and those images that you might have. Now, you can use pre-built models that we provide for you, or you can more likely build your own models to fit exactly the business needs that you have in your organization. And the great thing is that you can extend those using a lot of the existing process automation tools that you're already comfortable with and used to, like Process Builder and Flow Builder and so on. So how does this really work? So Einstein follows a pattern like this. So first you start by collecting and categorizing that unstructured data. And that could be inside of Salesforce. It could be data that's coming from outside of Salesforce. You give that to Einstein. Einstein uses a number of different AI techniques, uh, like, like deep learning, machine learning, natural lear language processing, to build an intelligent model. Now your users can use that capability to get predictions right where they work. That could be sales cloud, service cloud, communities, or even third-party applications. And the final step is the users can actually provide feedback. Think of this like a thumbs up, thumbs down kind of thing, where it can give information back to Einstein to improve the model so going forward you get better and better predictions. So pretty cool, right? But how do we make it happen? OK, Einstein Platform Services are an example of what I would call um, programmatic AI. In other words, developers use REST APIs and make HTTP calls to our APIs to build the model, authenticate, make predictions, and so on. So pretty cool stuff. And there are a great number of tools out there like Curl and Postman that can help you get started. But it's programmatic, so it requires a bit of technical background to get started, right? So that's exactly why we've built the Einstein Vision and Language Model Builder. 
we know it more, uh, more commonly as the Einstein Playground, but this is a tool that's available for free on the App Exchange now that helps you get started faster. So it does exactly that. It takes care of some of the, uh, the, the complexity around using those APIs, such as all the authentication for security and, and, the, and the like, gives you a graphical user interface where you can upload models, train the models, and uh, make pr uh, predictions, as well as even checking out the performance metrics of those uh, predictions. So the best way, I think, for you to understand what's possible with this model builder is through a demonstration. So I'm going to ask Serbi here, one of the developers of the Playground, to walk you through a few things about the Playground, and how to get started, how to download it, and so on. So Serbi. Thank you, Dennis. So this is what the Einstein Vision and Language Model Builder looks like on the App Exchange. It is absolutely free of cost. You can download it. Just hit the green button, and you can get started with predictions and building models and creating data sets, all of that immediately. Um, in addition to that, you get 2,000 predictions for free, which is more than enough to try out a proof of concept for your um, business. So once you download the App Exchange app, um, you have to sign up for an Einstein account using either your Salesforce account or uh, your Heroku account. Once you sign up for this, um, you can head over to the Einstein Playground and configure and link your Einstein account with your Salesforce account. So this is what the Einstein Playground looks like in your Salesforce org. It has a wide range of features like image classification, object detection, um, natural language processing using sentiments and intents. So um, before we begin with um, exploring all of these features, um, let me just show you how quick the setup is. So the setup can be done on the, in the Einstein admin tab, and it's just a two-step process. So you just have to enter your email address that is associated with your Einstein account and upload your uh, permissions file, which gets generated when you create your Einstein account. So, so just to be clear, the, this is the account information that you either provided or you were provided when you signed up for the Einstein Playground account, or yes. the Einstein Platform Services account, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. right. Great. Cool. So how do we get started then if we're authenticated and, and all lined up here? How do we start building a data set? Building a data set is very easy. Um, f so before we build a, b a data set, we need to work on a use case. And for today's presentation, we will work on an image classification use case where um, I build a data set that allows you to classify Salesforce mascots. So um, what I did here was I collected images. These are all animated images of um, various um, Salesforce mascots like Appy, Astro, Cloudy, and Cody, and organized them into uh, folders like this. And I collected about 10 images for each category and then compressed this file and uploaded everything to a cloud service provider like Dropbox or Google Drive. Once we're done with this, we can upload this data set onto um, the Einstein Playground. Oops. So um, I can go to the image classification tab and click on data set creation and just copy paste that link and hit create. In a couple of moments, a data set gets created and it is really fast. Now let's head over to the data sets and models tab and hit refresh data sets and you should be able to see the data set that I just created and you can access a lot of information about the data set, like all the labels that you created and how many images are associated with each label. So we, cr we uploaded the data set now. Um, so the next step is to create a model, to train the model, right? Yeah. That, that sounds pretty hard, training um, an AI yeah. model. <laughs> um, I'm pretty, yeah, when you say train the model, I'm sure everyone's thinking about involving a data scientist. But honestly, it's as easy as hitting this train button. And a model gets created. And it might take some time, maybe anywhere between 5 minutes to 20 minutes, depending on how large your data set is. You can also track the progress of the model creation here, and you can check if it succeeded or if, or, or if it failed. OK, so you're, let's say you've got the data set created, and you gave us some good tips on how to create the data set, good things to keep in mind there. You've uploaded that data set, and now you've told, um, you've told Einstein that you want it to train up a model. Um, so 
how do I know if uh, a part of that training process, as I understand it, is that Einstein's doing some testing as it goes along. And so how do I really get a confidence for how good my model is? You know, how is it performing? Yes, uh, we have another feature where uh, you can access the metrics of model creation. Um, right here, I'm just waiting for the model to get created right now. So um, unfortunately, I can't open it up. But you get access to a confusion matrix, and you can te te uh, test out the training accuracy, testing accuracy, and things like that, and figure out where your model is going wrong in case it is. So your model's still training here, it looks like. So maybe while, while we're waiting for that, um, we've talked a little bit about, or you're showing us here, image classification as one of the alternatives. But we also know that Einstein Platform Services cover natural language processing. So can you tell us a little bit about how does the playground, how does the model builder also support those kind of models? OK, so natural language processing is also very similar to um, the whole process of creating a data set, creating a model. All of that is very similar to image classification as well. All you have to do is you can go to the Intense tab and uh, click on data set creation and upload a CSV file. And your CSV file looks something like this. It's just two columns. The first column consists of data. The second column consists of the label. And here we're talking about a case writing example. And we labeled everything depending on some of the most common issues that uh, service agents deal with, like billing, password help, shipping info, and so on. This is the only difference. Um, your data set should be um, a CSV file or a JSON file. And once we have this, we can upload it onto a cloud service ser a provider and hit create. The, your data set gets created. You can access the same information like the labels, the number of examples associated with each label, the status of the data set creation, and so on. So it's, it's really the same process uh, exactly that you went through with the image classification, mm -hmm. just obviously a different data set, right? OK. So how are we doing on uh, our image classification? Is it, uh, is it wrapping up for us here yet? Einstein um, seems to be a little busy this morning. <laughs> yeah. Hit oh. refresh. He's still running. Oh, succeeded. Oh, succeeded. All yeah. right, great. So now uh, I asked earlier a little bit about um, how do I know that my model's how it's doing, how it's performing? How can, how can I see that kind of information from the, uh, from the playground here? Yes. So um, this is the metrics that you, you have access to. Like I mentioned before, you have the confusion matrix up here. Um, the diagonal indicates the number of images that were currently uh, classified. And um, you can access the testing ac accuracy, the training accuracy, and the training losses as well. Awesome. OK. So how does, uh, how does it work? How could I? Is there a way that I can test out my model and start using some samples against it without having to actually build everything into my custom app in order to get started? Yeah. So. so you can go to the predictions tab and select the model that was just created. So as you can see, the Salesforce mascots model just appears in this pick list. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and drag and drop an image of Cody. Let's give it a couple of moments. Very nice, Cody. Yep. Still has tag on him. <laughs> OK. As you can see here, um, Einstein correctly classified this image as Cody. And you can see the confidence score as well. It is 90% accurate. And this is, pretty, um, this is pretty amazing, because all I gave to the data set was an animated image of Cody. And here, it's a real stuffed animal. So you can see how accurate this is working. With just a few, what, you only had 40 or 50 images in mm -hmm. that, uh, correct? Yep. OK, so one last thing I think here is um, we've talked a lot about how the playground, the model builder, can help you get started and how you can upload data sets, train the models, test them out, and things. But it's a little out of the scope here. But the real point of all this is to be able to build this AI into your custom applications. Maybe you can tell us a little bit of how would, how would, uh, how would our customers do that if they were building a Salesforce app, for example? Sure. So um, this is a process builder. And you can integrate the Einstein APIs with process builder. And the whole point behind um, allowing customers to do this is to enable customers or employees with different skill sets to leverage um, deep learning and embed everything into their application. Here, it's a simple three-step process. If you are configuring a process builder, you have to first define um, the object on which you want to run the intents or 
um, the image classification on, and then you need to define some criteria, and then um, finally you need to define some actions. Here, this is an invocable Apex class. It is available online. Um, and for the App Exchange package will support this in the next release, but right now you have access to an open source version of it. So um, you can download that and specify some in important um, fields or information like the field to analyze, the field to store your answers in, and the model ID, ID to use. So basically, it's a three-step process. It's, a ve it's very intuitive, and even your Salesforce admins can get uh, started with deep learning. Awesome. All right. So I think we're going to wrap up here. But thank you very much, Suri, for giving us a view into how the, the, the playground, the Einstein vision and language model builder works. So in summary here, what we've talked about is how you can use Einstein vision and language to build AI into your custom applications. Again, as I, as I mentioned before, this is what I would call programmatic AI. So it requires, uh, it requires development skills to build this into your very, very specific custom applications that you're building. But the Einstein Vision and Language Model Builder, or also known as our Einstein uh, Playground, is a capability free from the App Exchange that you can use to get started, to start creating your data sets, uploading them, training your models, and testing them out interactively through a GUI interface as opposed to having to work entirely through the REST in interfaces through tools like Curl or Postman. And then once you've built the model, you've tested it out, you feel comfortable with it, you can build that capability into your own applications, whether on Salesforce, typically using Apex code, or uh, the process builder as Serby showed you, or flows, those type of capabilities that you're already used to uh, building workflows into applications, or even into your own custom applications. So .NET, Java, PHP, it doesn't matter. Any kind of language that can make a REST API call to our services can take advantage of uh, the AI capabilities built into Einstein vision and language tools. So thanks for coming today. I really appreciate it. Serby and I will hang around here in the back if you have any other questions. Otherwise, have a great time this week at Trailhead DX. Thanks for coming.